and three and two and one. Uh, Shalom, Joe. Shalom, Lex. Shalom, everybody. Shalom, everybody. Hope you're all doing good. Uh, we're going to do another book of Daniel because these all seem to connect. Uh, yeah, man. If you want to open up, go ahead. If not, let's get started. All right. We'll get started with Daniel. Um, um, in the first year of Darius, the son of uh, as Azarias, um, of the seed of the Medes, which was made king over the realm of the Chaldeans. Okay, let's uh, let's stop there, so we can get a little bit better understanding about what we're dealing with. It's uh, Ahaz. Uras. I have no idea. He had a better pronunciation. If you ask me, who? Who knows? I'm sure his sons care, but uh, it is the given name, excuse me, is given as the name of the king, her husband Esther, in, uh, in the book of Esther, said to have ruled from India even unto Ethiopia over 107 and 20 provinces. So you have 127 right there, and then that is over the Archi Archimedian, Archimede, but uh, yeah, I was gonna say the Archimedian Empire. Empire. Yeah, thank you. So when we look over here, uh, we know that eventually Alexander comes up. We're gonna put Alexander down here, uh, somewhere around there. We'll see that. Okay, so next we go to. Uh, uh, well, anyway, however you pronounce his name, as you look in through here, yeah, he has you easy. Okay, so it doesn't. So when you look at the Tiberian, I want you to see like how it says Haz or Ha Sueros, Sueros, right? And if you look, you can, you can pull the, the Soros. Out of there. Sounds like there's a Soros in there. Uh, just word wise. Sueros. So it uh, says uh, in the Septuagint or Bible, it's like, you see, they Romanized her. In the Vulgate, he is. His name is in, applied in the Hebrew Bible to three rulers as a Babylonian official or king of the Medes. So you see, uh, just like in Egypt, no pharaoh is named. Here, like in Egypt, they have a dynasty and as it is saying, three kings, three rulers. Are being called Aha Sur Surus, Aha Surus, something like that nature. So <clears throat> these three rulers and a Babylonian official were Median king. So now they want to say the Babylonians, who are Hamites, they are the Medes or Median people. All right, so. Just pay attention that that is being put out there. So it is to say Ahazur uh, is a Babylonian king. If we understand what seems to be going on, it's just one long line. Again, when we can't find Persia anymore, but we can find Babylon, now we know why. As we go a little further, they had something, Ahasuerus at the end of the world, or Ahasuerus at the end of the world. And it's a uh, 19th century oil painting, right, uh, Hungarian artist. 
I really don't know the relevance, just understand in 1888, people are drawing him, painting him as the king. Uh, on one second, having some recording issues. Okay, so I'll go a little bit further. Joe looked up Ahasu Rosh and Black Emperor, and then uh, a few different images came up than usual. Um, one of the ones that stood out. is this image that Joe wanted us to see of Darius the third. Now this is very important by his given name Komodi Komo Komomandius. Komomandius. Alright, and again most of us will rec recognize that as though in the US on there that's Greekish, right? 333 to 330 is when he ruled his empire. So, if we look into Alexander and him taking his fight uh, to Darius, excuse me, before we read that he conquered Egypt from Darius, and when we go into it a little further, it says he's conquered Egypt, then he goes to the Persian Empire and conquers Darius. So we'll be looking at that briefly. Since we messed it up, we'll correct it a little bit. Since I messed it up, we'll correct it again. Uh, the Medes were an ancient Iranian people. Understand the land is being brought up here, not the true people. The people are the Medes, the people are the Persians. The Iranians today are Scathians from the stock of Scathia. So they're not Anglo, they're not Persian, right? This is why they push the name Iran, and that's why they call themselves Iranian, because they are not the ancient people. They're just using that place. So connected to these are a lot of interesting pictures that show what the ancient people uh, looked like. And... If we take in some consideration the stonework and ignore the portraits, we'll, we'll have a better understanding. Again, in these stone reliefs, you see the cheekbones very prominent. No matter what stone relief you look at in the portrait, you don't see the cheekbones like that at all. So it's just a uh, proxy attempting to fill a gap. To make people happy again this is the image of a modern iranian this is the modern iranian is not the ancient mead is not the ancient persian uh go here into this black emperor again there's a couple pictures that just kind of stand out anyway here you have one ancient elam right if you say darius is a Mede. He is of ancient Elam. You can see this picture right here. This cat got an afro. A straight up box. I mean, if he, if he stepped into a time machine, came out in the 80s, you would give him a high five like nothing was different. What's up, man? Not much. Keep it moving. You see the Asiatic eyes. You see the afro. You see the afro is rubbed down on top. They didn't take, let's break the nose. They said, let's scar the afro. So when people look at these pictures and see the afro, they won't be able to just genuinely, genuinely connect it to these uh, images because what? the afro so prominent in this right now look at this if they say oh 
this caucus character looks close to modern Iranian. Yet they look nothing like the ancient Persian or the ancient Mede. So think about this, and this is why I always argue the stonework means a lot more than some picture. Again, we got this Xerxes, right, in the movie 300, this weird looking guy, but they just used somebody that had some color, right? They didn't use an, an Afro-Asiatic. Again, he's running around bald, and every image of them shows off <laughs> their elegant hair and beards. He probably got a spray tan. Right. Again, if anybody's seen the series of 300, Xerxes starts off with, uh, with straight hair. This is some uh, Hindu Hamite actor. He starts off with straight hair, and then he goes into a pool, and he comes out taller, dark skin, and his hair is falling out. So... I mean, I, I mean, hey, hey, let's just bust. All right, so just gonna bust the fair use. I have the right to show this material without permission, even though the material is copyrighted. I don't make any money for this. I'm just showing an education clip. So this is from Rise of the Empire. This is the birth of Xerxes. Right, <clears throat> so I'm gonna turn the volume down. Hopefully, we don't get the microphone picking up the sound and then canceling out the sound. Obviously, that's the problem that's going on, something like that. You will be a god king. Artemisia gathered the priests, wizards, and mystics from every corner of the empire. They wrapped the young king in Cimmerian gauze dipped in ancient potions and set him to wander the desert. Till in a delirium of heat and thirst, he stumbled upon a hermit's cave. Xerxes okay, passed the so, vacant eyes and then... Of course, he stumbles upon a hermit's cave. Now, remember, there's no hermit lives in the desert. It's a demon. You know what's going to happen. He's going to climb into a pool and he's going to be rebirthed. Ask yourself, if this clown can climb into the pool and be rebirthed, why didn't the old hermit climb into the pool and come out young again? Hmm? Because this is actually who he is making the bargain with. Let me introduce you to the devil. <laughs> Right? See the claw? Oh, no, it's not a claw, but... Um, it's cave. All these, all these... Xerxes passed the vacant... ...sitting around in this cave, not going to this pool. ...eyes and empty souls of the hollow creatures hollow that dwell in the dark corners of all men's that hearts. dwell in the dark corners. It's not a hermit. He's past the vacant eyes and empty souls of the hollow creatures that dwell in the dark corners of all men's that? hearts. You walk past these hermits, and she then describes these hermits to be dark creatures with empty souls who sit in the bottom of dark men's hearts. How creative writing this can be. Xerxes passed the vacant eyes and empty souls of the hollow creatures that dwell in so, the dark corners of all men's what hearts. What is in the dark corner of all men's heart? Anybody know? Da -da -da! They're telling you it's a new season. New season coming out. Anybody know? Power. I have the power. And that's what all men want. What they don't have. 
think about the law. Nobody is above anybody. Everyone's equal under the law. But I, you, me, we know that we want what? Power. We want power over everybody else. If I could take a rifle and put it this way and connect it to me and I don't ever pull the trigger, I'm powerful. Nobody would see it coming. I'm more powerful than the average man. If I could turn it into a liquid and come back into what? Form? That's power. Right? This is all about power. And in that darkness, so he surrendered he himself surrendered completely. surrendered himself completely. In that unique way of saying, he gave himself up. I relinquish my will unto, right? Isn't that what he's saying? Isn't that what she's saying about him? She didn't go. How does she know what the hell happened? She's the witch. She knows other men have done this. He surrendered himself completely to power so evil and perverse. So, but as he emerged, a man goes into the pool, surrenders himself completely, no, huh? to the darkness. Right? That's what she said. Us to power so evil and perverse. New, but, but prayed to a god. Him fathers knew not. Hmm. He surrendered himself completely to power so evil and perverse. But as he emerged, no part now, of the human man that was all as he survived. These creepy ass things, right? <laughs> where, where were they a second ago? Now, all the hermits then all of a sudden turned into priests. Do you see the dark being in the background right there? Do you see his shoulder pads? Do you see his golden armor? Do you see his pointed ear? No part Just of the human the right man moment, you can see it. Can you see it? No, no, no. You can see it right there. No, that's the wall. That's not the wall. It's the shapeshifter showing you he exists. You're making a movie about me? I'll make a special appearance. Where is that behind? There's the arm. Oh, it's the wall, man. You think it's the wall. But as he emerged, no part of a human man that was Xerxes survived. Now, all of a sudden, the wall disappeared. All the walls of the cave disappeared. Now it's a well-built house. All the old men then turned young. All their old withered flesh done turned youthful. Their white rags done turned into what? Black Shao Kahn uniforms. The wall that we thought was a cave wall before done turned into this elegant monastery with fire urns. When I showed you the wall and the shoulder pads and the armor that looked like gold and you sat there and said, I don't know, nigga, that looked like wall. What was it standing between? Well, now it's two golden urns. So if I go back a little bit, you see now, it's a doorway. You see the pillar? You see the pillar? And what was standing there before in the doorway? Their master. But as he emerged, no part of a human man that was Xerxes survived. The desert, so it be a mirage.
Now, if you see what just happened, he went in as one ethnos and he came out as another ethnos. He went in as five foot six, he came out as six foot two. It's not him anymore. He is a moldable, shapeable, form, f f vessel, formable vessel. And he gave himself away, and he, something else is able to shape shift. That is what they're showing you here. How did he go in in rags and then come out in jewelry? But as he emerged, darkness, he surrendered himself completely. How did all the, to power the so evil and have perverse. rags? Then all of a sudden they're in ninja gear. But as he emerged, so see, no part of a human man. That's the entrance of the cave. This thing's been standing there the whole time. He emerged. No part of a human man that was Xerxes survived. His eyes blazed like scarlet coals. He was stripped, cleansed, glabrous and smooth. Xerxes was reborn a god. That pool is literally a super a Clark Kent phone booth. That's not the same guy. It's not the same ethno, it's not the same size. Don't have the same features no more. I don't care if it's the same actor. I mean, shit. He go in as Pedro, he come out as Jerome. <coughs> Call it movie magic if you want. It's just shit, right? So again, when we deal with these things, There's a reason. Because if a man historically <laughs> looked like this, it right? didn't look like this guy walks in the pool, right? So, you know, and then it comes out like this. <laughs> Ain't this what they're trying to resemble? You can see the man got his hair braided back somehow. And you see he's wearing a headband. You know the skull don't come out that far right there. You know, them people can't do these kinds of things with their beard. On beards, okay, is getting so, rid of his beard. And so why am I doing this? Beard, to make a point. It up, I believe strongly. It if you're spares. great, they gonna hate. Ha! Yeah! And then, uh, okay, so... I'm not gonna sit there and toy with the, the author or anything. Uh... I think I got the right video. Maybe I got the wrong video. Well, I tried to grab a quick video, uh, which I saw is this one. Uh, I think I grabbed the wrong one. The man put, has a do rag on his face for chin waves. All right. So I saw this on the internet. This dude has a do rag on his beard. Because he has, wait for it, waves in his beard. And I'm like, bro, this is the most amazing thing I done ever seen. You know what I'm saying? You really went this forever, laid your, laid your beard down, bro. Like, how did you get beard waves, bro? Let me get the beard do-rag. You feel me? Because you know what I'm saying? I'm going to lay... I'm finna lay my beard down right here and get the waves on here. You know what I'm saying? I'm gonna get the perm under here. You know what I'm saying? I'm gonna have the whole thing set up. You know what I'm saying? It's like, so I love I am usually the last person to know about the new phase. The new phase. The new, right? So, now you see, he's, this guy's talking how to, this, this, this this young man is talking how to fix dents and divots in your wave and all the other races are doing want beer beard waves here's 
how from the original beard waiver. Now, right now, you see there's a video from a month ago. That's the guy that was in the video doing the beard wave. Now, I, I'm willing to bet in about two, less than two years, you will have caucus people. Let me put my right arm up. You will have caucus people on camera claiming that they are the originators of the beard wave in this modern era. Now, there it is. You, you, you have, you have it. Here we have beard curl removal. So their beards curl and they're showing you how to remove the curl. Here's how, how to straighten your beard. Now again, I'm showing you this because when you start rap, they say, oh, well, we want to be rappers now. When you start this, they say, oh, we want to be that now. When, when you don't lay claim, they come out and say, well, we started it. And you can clearly see. No, in the modern era, they're doing nothing like this at all. And you will see this fade take off because all of the what? The ancient statue destruction. Nobody has a problem taking down white statues. Now we're going to see, because people are playing the black and white game, some information that Jodan brought out we will cover in a video pretty soon. We're going to see that black statues of Europe are being taken down. The good old Moabite image. They're arguing over black peats sticking out. So, we'll go a little bit further. Share the fair use. Then we have the mead. Now, as we get into the meads, they are the ancient Persians. You see it says ancient Iranian. That's not true. That is a false statement. Iranians are scathians. All right. So the Medes are Persians. So you cannot say the ancient Persian religion is Iranian. <laughs> now, Iran is not a modern name. It actually is an ancient name, but it's an ancient name for the scathians. Again, as we look at these pictures, what comes out is the, the, the flat of the flatness of the hook in the nose. The flatness of the hook in the nose. The cheekbones. Again, we don't see that ethnos within the people that call themselves Iranians. We don't see that in the people that call themselves caucus. We don't see that in the people that call themselves white. Yet if we look up Darius, we've already read from his inscription that he calls himself Anglo. I believe it's Anglo. <laughs> we can always type in Darius inscription. Right? Meads today. Oh, it's present day Iran. We just showed it can't be because Iranians are just to show you just put in Scalia and then put in Iran Iranian see see how Irano Scalian is because Indosakas nomadic people from there they Progressively expanded into present day Iran. We learn that this was during the reign of Cyrus. Because what? It was either Cyrus or Darius. We can just go back to that video or just reread it today. Because his right hand man was Iranian, out of Scalia. Then he killed. 
whichever king we're talking about, and the son of the king later comes back and kills the Iranian and his people. But you see, that didn't matter because the Iranians are in control of the area that we call Persian today. And that is why we do not have a continuation of the Persians today, but we have the installment of the indo scadian Sakas who are Iranians. They are known as the Sith, the Saka, their brothers or cousins, or is the Isku'i or Askuzi, which we call Ashkenazi, which we get back to uh, when we sit there and just uh, type in, we'll just, we don't have to type, we'll just ask Google, and we just take that name alone, Ask the Robot. And what will the robot give us on this? All right? Askuzi. And the next thing it says is Ashkenaz. Right? So if we take the word, right? Ashkenaz. And here it is right there. We don't have to do that. Ashkenaz Jews. So our Scathians Hebrew should be the next question. Our scathians from Abraham should be the next question. And this should be gold in everyone's mind. Since they attempted to change times and laws, obviously other things because we have all this proxy, these people pretending to be other people all over the world. Well, why doesn't it say they attempted to change times and laws and ethnos? Because the book's been altered by this Council of Zion. This Council of Psalms 83. Arthkaiians Hebrew, right? It's been suggested that Ashkenaz of the Bible is the equivalent of Scythia. Hmm? Origins of Ashkenaz, right? Who are the Scythians? Hmm? Why didn't it say, yeah, they're, they're, they're Hebrew? Why didn't it say, yeah, they're from the forefather, blah, blah, blah? Because clearly they're not. The Asian, here, here's where they claim, right? They had to do it. They claim that Josephus, commander, a Pharisee, historian, right? Or, Got to see this one. And here's the claim that the ten tribes became the Scathians. <laughs> right? This is this is this is why. This is obviously why we have proxy people. Right? This is this is the answer. Hmm. So this is why they oh, why why they why they, why, they, why they lied. To them. Let's see. Are they ham? And you see, if I say are they Shem, it's all this. Well, maybe we don't know. If I say are they ham, it's just no. They're fucking Japheth. Do you see how as soon as you ask a different question, they're like, no, 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 no. They're not Hamites at all. You see how proud Hamites are? Do not cluster those fuckers with us. You see how proud Ham is? Do not put them in our category. 
You see how Shem's people are oppressed? That you can sit there and say, are Scathians Hebrew? And all this, mm, maybe, and you already know it's a lie. But as soon as you say, are they Hamites? Are they just straight up Ham? No, no, no. They have nothing to do with Egypt. They have nothing to do with Carthaginia. Nothing to do with us. See how proud pride comes out? Do not, do not dare think to call those barbarians anything of what we are. I mean, it's just, it's, are the Scathians ham? No, 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 Jafet, even the robot. Will Robinson, Will Robinson, dumb Negro asking stupid questions. No, no, robot, great fucking lies spread everywhere. Here it says right here, Gomer. This isn't hard. Where does Gog come out of? Where does Magog come out of? Well, they come out of giants, but they intermix with Gomer. What happened behind the caucus walls? Yeah, earthquake on a level that we can't understand. A quake that went through flesh. What do these Iranians say? When will our heritage and history end? Well, when the time of Gog and Magog come. And everything behind the caucus gates is freed under the world. And they seize the world. Oh, I can see our... Ethno is destroyed now. Ain't that what the guy said? Something like that? They already know. For them it is written. For us it is written. For Gog and Magog. And his kind and his children. They're just released. Once upon a time. A dragon. A girl. And then came the dragon boy. We call his name. Something that rhymes with that. All these variants. Yeah, we have this variant in the human DNA. We have that variant in the human DNA. Why? Because nobody wants to just be, oh, they're just Scathians. What do you expect? Oh, they're Sumerians. What do you expect? Is that what everybody would say about these people locked behind the caucus gates? Hmm? Get this. The Greeks come out of Japheth and the Greeks lock their own brothers, lock them behind the gates. We should be, how, what Japhethite tribes were locked behind the caucus gates? This ain't hard. Scathian sake bullshit. So when you get into the Persian King Cyrus, all of a sudden you want, you know, you're going to get this. Ah, in comparison to the Egyptians, in comparison to the Seleucid Empire, uh, you get this list of commanders, generals, and kings of this so-called empire. Again, the ancient pictures here are drawn to look like the modern Iranian, Scathians. The Ancient pictures drawn here don't look like the ancient statues. Again, if you type in Ptolemy, they show you a statue. If you type in this, they show you a statue. If you type in that, they show you a statue. If you type it in and they show you a portrait, they're trying to hide the original. Y'all want to see what Cleopatra really looked like? Joe, do you see what, you, what Cleopatra really looked like? Yeah, so. Does she look like what they tell us today? Not at all. Nothing. Is she beautiful? Oh, yeah, yeah. She's a stunner. You remember who drew her? Um.
Ποιος είναι ο Ναι. Oh, I'm thinking about the name of the book. My bad, my bad. Oh, that's Haggard. Yeah, yeah. This is what... Oh, you see this? This is perfect! Here is what the famous Michelangelo drew for Cleopatra. Here's what some white man did. Here is the famous Michelangelo picture of Cleopatra. Here's what somebody else tried to do. Okay? See what they did? See what they did? They tried to draw a caucus. You see how that works? Look what they did. A comparison. This is Michelangelo's picture of a melanated woman who we call the Greek. I told you Greeks are black. With straight hair, you called me a liar. You went into private groups, called me a liar, ignoring all these black Greek colleges sitting right because you're related to it. And people trust you, even though they don't know you're connected to this. It's okay. I'll be that liar, but these images speak for themselves. Michelangelo, and then here is what? Look at this bitch's broken neck. They tried to. Fucking day. They tried to mess this up so bad. This this picture over here looks like a dead person. Like somebody snapped her neck while they were drawing. Here's Michelangelo's version of right. You can see it for yourself, right? There's Gerard R. His drawing of Cleopatra is caucus. Now, why are people allowed to do this, huh? Then they put this. Relief around it, right? It's a place, and they're gonna put a town in the background. Castle. Why don't you see this picture everywhere when they say, let me type in Cleopatra. Now see, I always told you, it's the shit that stands out. If you sit there and Cleopatra, Cleopatra, they show you all this stuff, they show you all this Egypt stuff. They show you, oh, it's the people that would have been behind the caucus gates at the time. Now you go and you see somebody that lived not as a contemporary, wink, wink, or how do we know that he wasn't a contemporary? Why? Because their timeline? Now you see what they do? They, they, they love them some Dr. Martin Luther King. The prophet that dreamed a dream. That the Bible said the prophet that dreamed a dream is a false prophet. Dr. MLK. Al A. Bastard statue. I got nothing against King. He did what he did. Uh, I can't. I don't got no time machine. I want to show you. This is why I always say this is why the statue is an alabaster. How long will it take the rain to chip away the little curly curlies that they put in his hair on this outdoor statue? Hmm? How long? Will it take, isn't that what his speech was? How long will it take for the rain to weather this statue to make the ethnos go away? How many hail chips from the heavens will it take to alter the look of this statue? Why'd you make it in white alabaster? Hmm? 
Isn't that grand? He's got a sneaky grin, doesn't he? <laughs> so, you know, just you have to wonder when you see all these images of Cleopatra. No, it's it's a bunch of different races claiming her. Hmm. Why is that? to be considered anywhere near legitimate. You have to think every time someone has crammed some image down your throat that has nothing to do with reality. I find it funny when Hollywood sits there and and, 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 and and argues about, oh, that don't look like the, the person that should play the part. So, eventually this is going to take us into Darius III, and Darius III is of course the one that claims to be king of kings and i guess this is a good time to bring this up there seems to be what we call syncretinism going on with christianity where it takes a piece and a part of this we can clearly see this the sync the syncretinism when we deal with government versus the laws versus the statutes the code that's been put in place versus admiralty law, we can see that we have a enligus, a scarecrow, a straw man representation of us. The two are to be considered one, viewed from one side of what we call our lawful system. Yet the two are not to be entwined on the law, excuse me, law side of our legal system. I, I, I'm sure I messed the beginning of that up, but I hope people understand. Now, we get into Darius. There are mysteries surrounding Darius, if he existed or which person he is. We'll take a little brief view of Hollywood's whitewashed version. So after he conquers Egypt, puts himself on the throne. He takes a detour up to Darius, king of kings, at this time in, here, in history. Got it playing too slow. Let me pause this real quick. All right, I've changed this. So, Joe, go ahead. Oh, yeah, it was um, the uh, Egypt was pushing the Trinity in a syncretism. So, we get the Trinity, the religious syncretism, we get the Trinity out of Egypt. We get the hanging on the cross out of the barbarian way, Conan. In this system, Levitical law does not state baptism. They get baptism from another uh, culture. What did we just see? 
in the Persian culture. They dip themselves in the water with the priests surrounding them, and then they come out. In Christianity, the priest steps in the water. It's in Cretanism. Now they call it baptism. Demon. <laughs> Belief. Demonism. Now, <clears throat> in law, we get the birth certificate, the recording from Babylon. We get the citizenship versus national from Rome. You see how they're taking different pieces and parts of the statue that, what, Daniel's talking about in the first place. The government is a religious system. It is a church. The booth that you go to, no matter which booth it is, when you pay the attendant, that's the pass around the money cup. That's why most of those are metal trays, shiny metal trays. Sprayed with solutions when after you touch them, your fingerprints disappear. As Archimedean deadly chariot attacks Macedonian ranks, which managed to evade the slaughter, creating the gap between their formation. Now, oh, man, uh, Philip taught his son to use, uh, uh, taught his army to use the Phalanx uh, maneuver. So, uh, not even going to get into this. Um. <laughs> That's how they fought in those boxes, so you wouldn't have had the open, uh... You know, you can see a lot of this movie is, is, is bad because of, uh, you know, you have the fighting here and you have everybody standing around and shit. Hard to manage. Hard to manage that many people at once. But again, here's, you know, it's in, it's in this clip, you know, it's kind of. Threatened Darius the third flees from the battlefield, uh, and we'll just leave it at that. You can see that they're wearing the Fajarian type hat, even though it's not the Fajarian at the time. You know, um, you can see how the top makes almost a Moabite hat. You can see how all this is going to unify itself through history. Here, uh. We have Darius the Third, originally named. Oops, let's go back up. Ah, here we have a. Uh, 
originally named Art Asht Ashata and called Komod Kom Kodom Mat Kodomandus by the Greeks. So there's his Greek name. All right, it's just clearly an attack. Uh, was the last king of the Alchemedian Persian Empire. So again, the Alchemedian Empire is a Greek empire, right? That's, that's, how, that's, that's, that's what we pretty much understand, right? But as we understand about the Alchemedian Empire, Syria is involved as well. As we see right here, it's Persia involved too. So if the black Greeks are not in their land anymore, the black Persians are not in their land. You see where I'm going with all this. They're all right here with us. You see the Persian flag, green, white, red. Sure, you can find this flag here, just in a different design. So, here you have from, he reigns from 336 to 330. So, Art Ashta adopted Darius as the dynastic name. His empire was unstable. So, briefly, we're going to look at uh, Alexander. Here we have Iran, the Medes. The Medes, were, we, we covered that. I have that out of place. So, let's move Alexander over here. A little bit further. And we'll look at this one. There's something critical that's said here. And I'll show you where they messed up. So, again, uh, attack, attack, attack. So, so, attack, attack, attack. I've never been attacked by Wiki so much. So, here we have Alexander. Alexander was a king, Basilus, or something like that. The Greek term and title has signified various types of monarch through history. Right? It is widely understood to mean king or empire, emperor. So, Basilius, or something of that nature, of the kingdom of Macedon. Now, again, uh, to go down here here it talks about his situation with Darius I don't really want to focus on that here we have Egypt and then after that we should see Persia and we do but he said says Assyria Babylon first and it's very interesting because everything else we read he goes from Egypt to Persia but now they're going to put Assyria Babylon. So not getting too hung up on that. It's just something we need to pay attention to. This Egypt thing should uh, be serious. This Egypt thing should be mind blowing to everyone. It's called the Seas of Gaza. Now, when Alexander destroyed Tyre. Most of the towns on the route to Egypt quit quickly capitulated. However, he met resistance at Gaza. The stronghold was heavily fortified and built on a hill. Understand, they don't have to explain any of this. It's the extra unnecessary that gives it all away. I'm going to continue. Requiring a siege. Okay? Everything required a siege. Unless you met for open battle. When his engineers pointed out to him that because of the height of the mound. Okay, so 
it would be impossible. This encourage encouraged Alexander to all the more to make the attempt. So all of a sudden, we have a uh, fortification and it's built on a hill, and then they accidentally slip up and they call it a mound. Joe, where are mounds prevalent at in the world? All across the land of America. All across America. Not even one specific spot. Like Joe just said, all across the land. Mounds are an American thing. And a, a new world. Why? Because this is the land that the Greeks fought the giants. Or the war of the giants that we hear from Greeks. And the Greeks aren't really talking about themselves, are they? Right? This person they call Zeus in one language, they call Amon another, and Baal another. So, it's ancient America talk. Again, I'd love to sit there and say, no, 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 they've proven to me it's over there in these pyramids and blah, blah, blah. They haven't. If he's sieging Egypt, why is he dealing with Gaza? Oh, because they're close. They can't be that close. He went from Tyr to Egypt on the way, Gaza. So from Tyr to Gaza to Egypt. They want to tell you all oh, that's on the other side of the world. Do you know how close that is to each other that they, that they claim? One empire could not be existing next to another empire. The Greeks can't have a giant empire right next to what? Tears giant empire? Right next to Egypt's giant empire? Right next to the Persian giant empire? Then how the fuck are they empires? I'm sorry, that just doesn't make sense. In comparison, they could just you could just compare Texas to a lot of this stuff over there. Texas is bigger than <laughs> that. that you, you, that's a great point. You know what? That's like saying the Empire of Kentucky, the Empire of Tennessee, the in Empire of Missouri, and the Empire of Illinois. Everything else doesn't make any kind of production. All in one spot. Boy, that must be one hot box. Everybody trying to say, I'm the emperor, I'm the emperor, I'm the emperor. Why aren't they having a Diodachi war just like the other guys? Why? Because they're just not under one general. They're in the same spot. You can't take a poop without, hey, you're in my empire. Well, hey, I couldn't throw it in mine. Only walk five feet. I mean, the way they write this, they're all living on top of each other like damn puppy dogs. How can you have an empire if you ain't fucking conquered everybody else's shit? I would have described it in that. At best, they would have little towns. Right. Are they misusing the word empire? Should it just be nation? Because they're all talking about how they're conquering each other. I don't know. I, th I think they're using the right word. But again, they're all working together. They're, the Greeks are doing constant business with Egypt until somebody says, hey, let's just go live in Egypt. The Ptolemy War against Egypt, like they had, like what? They had police, and then you know, no, I, I don't know. This just, it just doesn't sound right. Take five bucks, it, sit them all next to each other. Those are the empires. Take, take, take three thousand cups, sit them all around there, and this is must be just the rest of the people. So again. 
we're dealing with mounds that messes everything up that takes us into harry hubbard because ub interviewed harry because ub saw something that harry was trying to show and harry goes into what all the artifacts that he found Showing you what Alexander allegedly looked like, what his generals allegedly looked like. Then we go to Harry Hubbard in the Illinois caves. What do we see? We see a nose. What do they call Alexander, a half-breed Persian? Isn't that the Persian nose? I mean, I, I mean do you want me to go back to the Persian part of the Medes? All right, show you the images of the Medes. He's a half breed, his nose is straighter. When we read from 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 uh who is their guy? Uh the, 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 the ancient Greek writer. Right? He he gives a description that at first they didn't accept him because he was a Greek. Right? Living in Persian territory. Right? Five ancestors before him, Philip. They say Philip is the father of Alexander, but he's actually his great-great-great-great-great-grandpa. Five generations, just like most of us. The Burroughs Cave, that's what they call it. What hat is that? Ain't that the Smurf hat with a snake on it? Right? It's a Smurf hat turned into a cobra hat. Cobra La. This is what they look like without the hat. How many black people do you see with this type of head balding right on top? Your hair is falling out, still growing it on the sides. This is your Greek writers. This is what they always want to show you. They always want to show you it in the caucus version. Even carved on stone, you can see the Afro Asiatic eyes. You can see the Afro. See how this hair matched the Persian's hair? To a great degree, divots. You see what happens when the other races have divots in their hair. They say, that's not good. This is how you remove the divots. This is how you straighten it. Falling into the Burroughs Cave. Remember, the images always have these nails, the same nail pattern. What is that? That's Sumerian. Everybody wants to act like we don't know what that means. They know exactly what it means. Right? That's an I, that's an H, and that's an S. That's going to be my best guess. And I know I'm right, because that's what they got carved in all the stained glass windows. Just to show you. IHS stained in all this glass. That's the mark of Alexander. That is not the mark of Christianity. That's the mark of Alexander. How do I prove it? That's you can't prove. What the fuck? Do you want to see, you want to hold this yourself? Then you need to go to the museum as hell. That. All this stuff, you know, people do videos on the Burroughs Cave. I don't know if this is from the Burroughs Cave. Here you go, Burroughs Cave. No, nah, they tell you we don't know what this says, but they already told you they know what Egyptian, what, what Egyptian language means. So why don't they want you to know all this stuff? What does this look like? Does this look like today's Indian? Is this when today's Indian got here with Alexander's group? They don't want you to know this stuff. 
So a whole group of people of different ethnos came over. See how the cheekbones are kind of weird high on this? See, that's that same statue as before, right? The nose is still like that. Same headdress, different artist. Now, if you guys don't know, I'm going to throw one more down. So, at Port Authority, that's what they would call it, right? It's the statues at Port Authority. Now, when you say Port Authority statues, is what they show you, all these weird ones. Now, Washington Union Station has all these statues, all right? So, let's type in Union Station because we want... So, it's very, very interesting when you go to Washington, D.C., and you see all these Roman statues, like it's the Hall of Rome. I remember we went to Washington and we protested the Catholic Church. We had no idea it had to do with the Sesta Q, but look at where we are today. And when we went, this is what stood out the most. Why would Washington, D.C. have any of these statues when these people that are imaged would be not in the modern time of the creation of Washington, D.C.? Unless, of course, DC was standing before, and the images, again, if you look at Washington, DC, the images there look much greater than you would see at what you call Rome. And again, when you look at these images, you see them as caucus, but remember the image of Cleopatra is a dark-skinned person with straight hair or not a, a very very loose big curled afro that is more kindly to straighten already in comparison to people with thick or tight afros so when we keep all this in mind, there is a mystery that is being held in dealing with the conquering of Egypt, the Ptolemy family, including Cleopatra, taking over this land called Egypt, and it being in a relative area of Tyre, which could be Washington, which it's just very odd. Tyre is an island. Washington is an island. Um, and of course, Gaza being close to Egypt, between Persia and Egypt, and Gaza having a giant mound as their fortification. When we understand Burroughs Cave being where these so-called alleged images that do mark all the symbols of Christianity, IHS or IHX. The 
It points us to one spot. Just one and only one. Now we, that's what makes this a little bit different than everything else. The importance of Cahokia has never truly been shown anywhere. The relative distance that they tried to show you, Gaza to Egypt in modern times, isn't that different from the location of the Cahokia Mount, Mounds to what they call Little Egypt? Illinois. So keep that in mind as we go further. Uh, the last thing that's brought up is the Chaldeans. And when you get into the Chaldeans, they show you a few ethnic types. Not many. And as you see, excuse me, these images don't necessarily look like what they show you. It says the Chaldeans, politics and identity in Iraq and the American diaspora. Now, when you understand Chaldeans are Hamites, You'll get a better understanding of where this is all leading to. Now, we're going to stop there and go back to the book of Daniel. And again, this is the only modern picture that they're going to show you to do anything to do with Chaldea. And their connection to Babylon or Babylonians. Right. And a little technical difficulty. We're back. Go ahead, Joe. All right. Do you know? Um, in the first year of Darius, the son of Ahasuerus, of the seed of the Medes, which was king over the realm of the Chaldeans. In the first year of his reign, I, Daniel, understood by books the number of years whereof the word of the issue came to Jeremiah the prophet, that he would accomplish 70 years in the desolation of Jerusalem. All right, hold on for a second. So here we have, when we click on anything in chapter, I mean, uh, verse 1, over here in the cross-reference, open this up a little bit, it says, here's the parts where we'll talk about Darius, the precepts for him, Daniel 1, Daniel 5, Daniel 6, Daniel 11. As we scroll down, it says, Ahasuerus, this was the Ast, Ast Yagis of the heathen historians. Do not know what that means. I'll just right click it, copy it. I'll minimize this and we'll go paste. Uh, obviously, it's of media. Spelled Herodotus as okay, so that's who I was trying to think of before Herodotus. Because when we read Herodotus's actual writings, he does not say what we know in history, he does not say that 
Alexander is the son of Philip. He's his great grandson. Okay, so, and again, Herodotus gives you how the Medes and the Greeks, or Macedonians of the Greeks, got along in the beginning that they didn't. So, let's go back. It says, he is, he was the Astyagus. Yegis of heathen historians. As we are learn from Tobit 14 and 15, where the taking of Nineveh is ascribed to Nebu Chad Nazir and Asurias. So this is the same person who were the same with Nebo Palaser and Astagius. Okay, so I don't know why Astagius is brought up again, but Nabu, now again, notice how all the these words are used again today. Nabu Polasir, we've heard before. I don't think we've looked him up before. It's on this one. Let's do that. Nabu Pazir. All right, so there we have him. He is a Chaldean king of Babylon. He is a central figure in the fall of the Neo-Assyrian Empire, the death of the Neo-Assyrian king Ashurbanipal. And they did say that 601. So you see how their time is everywhere, even though not talking about the exact same person. Again, that's what they have there. You ready, Joe? Uh -huh. All right. Uh, wait, wait, real quick, real quick. I'm sorry. So you see what they're saying here is these guys are working together, right? Ne Nebuchadnezzar. Now, we know Nebuchadnezzar is Babylon, and we know Ahur, Ahasuerus is Medes. Right, and he is king over the Roman Chaldea. Now we have Daniel is understanding by what reading books. He's reading books, therefore, the word of the issue came to Jeremiah. So, which book is he reading? Right, <laughs> so is this telling us in the time of Daniel he's reading the book of Jeremiah? And here we have precepts dealing with Daniel chapter 2. How to understand the word understood. We understand that he's reading. And he says to Jeremiah, books, the number of years, the ishi, whereof the word. The number of years the word of God, right? The word of the Creator came to Jeremiah. So I believe he's telling us he's reading the book of Jeremiah. You ready? Or you see anything else or anything different? No. Cool, cool. And I set my face unto the issue of Oha to seek by prayer and supplication. With fasting and sackcloth and ashes. Okay, so the fasting, he is starving himself. He is not eating. He is not drinking. The sackcloth, he is not wearing accommodable clothes. He's wearing itchy potato cloth stitched into a tunic. The ashes, you will understand what they do. They burn stuff constantly at this time. Even if they have lights, everybody has sacrifice. Everybody's burning stuff off, right? And he takes ashes of what he finds suitable, preferably based on the scripture, because he's reading Jeremiah, if not more. And he scatters the ashes and he rolls in the ashes. Okay? Sometimes they just place it straight on their head. Now, 
different times we read people do different things. Today we see people take close connection to this scripture or to that scripture. Daniel himself, I set my face unto the Ishi. So Daniel does not have, I, I don't want to see. Daniel does not have, I can't look at him if he can't. Daniel has this desire to seek the face because the Most High always talks about hiding his face. Want to continue? And I prayed unto the issue, my Eloha, and made my confession and said, O issue, the great and the great and dreadful Eloha, keep the covenant, keeping the covenant and mercy to them of him, to them that keep his commandments. Okay, let's stop right there. Here we have the prayer that he's showing, right? I am confessing to you and only to you. I'm not going to some Catholic booth, I'm not going to Earl, I'm not doing the, this to other humans, I'm not feeling that some other human has the power to listen to what I've done wrong and to give me some kind of relief. He is going straight to the prime source, most high. I have done these things wrong. He is confessing his sins to the only one who can save him from his sins, the Most High. And I say that in that kind of way because we have all these synchronized sin creaking, excuse me, sin cretinism within all these other religions that say this is the way to salvation, this is the way to salvation. Rapture. God created this for you. Why would you want to be taken away from this? Again, wise people point out, even Hezekiah said, What? Can I go to heaven? No, he said, give me more life. In Enoch, we're talking about the God of spirits. This is the God to give life to spirits. In Genesis, the God of life. The Most High curses somebody, he just kills them. No. He gives you a curse to pass on to generate. Live with this. Since you messed up, live with it. You don't confess to a box. You don't confess to the dead. You don't go to the funeral, uh, the graveyard. Oh, Grandma, I did this today. Oh, I feel bad. Right to the prime source. What does he say? Oh, lovely creator who created the birds and the bees and all in between. I want the sun to rise. You don't say nothing like that. He says, dreadful. Oh, that shows mercy. It is a wonderful golden being, a light that comes to people in their dreadful, scary, frightening. Fear not these things. You better fear him, right? Dreadful. We got to understand what dreadful means. Right? Fear. What did I say? No, you're just bumbling words. Frightening. Right? Be of be very afraid. Of what? The things that go bum in the dark? Hell no. The things that control them. All comes from one source. Everybody's plugged in the same thing. The rapist bring breathes the same air as good preacher, bad preacher. The murderer breathes the same air as the newborn baby that comes into the world. We're in a sharing capacity, whether we accept that belief or not. That's why ownership is a joke. Because it's the moment you're in, where you're at. Oh, I left these bushes. I come back. A uh, wolf has peed on all the berries. They're no good. It's the same thing as a child coming and pick on all the berries. You can't eat the berries from the bush anymore. What's the difference? It's the same thing as a tractor coming and plowing over the berries. The berry bush is gone. No, that's different. 
No berries next season. Ownership is the difference. Ready to continue? Yeah. We have sinned and have committed iniquity and have done wicked and have rebelled even by departing from thy precepts and from thy judgment. We have sinned. So he already went into I, 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 self, self, self. He's not a selfish, self-centered person. Now it's we. Even the knuckleheads need someone to entreat for them because they're not going to take it correctly. You see what he's doing? I'm learning how to communicate with the Most High from reading Jeremiah. by doing this and confessing his sins and speaking on behalf of everybody we have departed that's what you want out of the government I want to depart from the GOVT and go home to DAD hmm? I want to seek his Face. I need my private space to pray. I need a potato suit. I have ash. I need to roll in it. In my private space where no one can interfere. I need to confess between me and him in my private space the things that I have done wrong. I don't need to. What is Earl and going for? Hey, Jane, you know, that time you left your purse out? Hey, Tim, you know, that's not what Daniel's doing. What are these people to us? Oh, they're just, oh, people that lived in the past. Oh, they're just riddles. Oh, they're just old stories. Why cannot these people who communicated with the Most High, why can we not look at them as role models? Dear Alex, how do I pray? Let's ask Daniel. Oh, I don't want to get dirty. Then you don't want it. Now nah, I'm going to wait till tragedy happens. Then invite it. Because the dread comes in. Then you have that connection anyway. You just don't know it. Because we need to ask for the mercy. And we need to be saying our sins to the Most High alone of why we need the mercy. Not dunk your ass in the water and all things are good. Well, everybody would take baths in, right? With somebody else. Now, your ancestor got in sackcloth and ash. That's dirty. And these people get in white gowns. They just stole people's lands, people's rights. They were brought as slaves. They committed insurrection even after they were freed. They didn't want to build their cities. They came and burned down others and took people's stuff. They get in white gowns and dunk themselves after they put nooses around children's neck. And then they say, we's forgiven. And you see what Daniel did? He got down and grimy, covered in ash. What color is ash? Gray. So he, he covered himself till he looked like a spirit. There's got to be reason behind this. He put on potato sack cl clothing, the trashiest thing you could put on. 
covered himself to look like a ghost. Because he's because he had sins. Why? Because you're as good as dead unless you what? Get forgiveness. <laughs> Repent. <laughs> you gonna wait for the last day? You gonna wait for the last minute? I only have so many angels to save somebody, so I um, don't have anything left to give to you, buddy. I'm glad you repented. It's a little late. Why wait? You ain't worked in a year. You think the Sabbath Saturday? You're not keeping up with this. You're not keeping up with that. You're calling the most high other names. You're wondering why nothing has changed in your life. Repent. Most high, I am a piece of dung. You'll talk to yourself, but you won't talk to God? Let's continue, Joe. <clears throat> Need to have be hearkened unto thy service, the prophets, which spake in thy name, which spake in thy name to our kings, our princes, and our fathers, and to all the people of the land. So, hold on, man. You got people. Daniel himself is a servant. We see his prophecy. He is a servant, a prophet. You see, all these people will say different shit. Go against Isaiah's words. Go against Jeremiah's words. Go against Ezekiel's words. Go against Daniel's words. But what? These people have the authority to speak what? In the name of the Most High. Speak the words of the Most High. Isaiah 43 and 11. Next to the Most High, there is no Savior. What about that do you not understand? Let's continue, brother. This belongeth unto thee, but unto us confusing the faces, as at this day, to the men of Judah, and to the inhabitants of Jerusalem, and unto all Israel, they, that are near, and that are far off, through all the countries, neither thou hast driven them, whither, whither thou hast driven, because of they have trespassed that have that they have trespassed against thee. Let's let's start over, please. Just read that first sentence to to the word day. All right. Oh, issue. Righteousness belongeth unto thee, uh, but unto us confusion of faith. At, as at this day. So, even at the time Daniel is living, they can't tell the difference between this tribe and that tribe because confusion of faces is going around. Because the tribes are what? They're calling themselves different names. They're calling themselves different nations. Different tribes are mingled together under one name, calling themselves a nation, fighting wars to become an empire. And you can see this in five different buckets set next to each other in one place on the map. You've got the Egyptian Empire spread out trying to conquer, the Roman Empire spread out trying to conquer, the Greek Empire spread out trying to conquer. Persian Empire spread out trying to conquer. Syrian Empire spread out trying to conquer. Assyria Empire spread out trying to conquer. Yet, all these are united because the Greek, the Syrian, 
right? Are you are united under the solution with the person? And the Greek and Roman are united under Rome. And the Carthaginians are fighting against both of them until they completely lose and join them? Well, that sounds just like Darth Vader saying what? Luke Skywalker, join me or die. Now, all these times, what is Daniel saying? Oh, we stopped worshiping you. We broke off away from you. Now we're in captivity under one of these nations. We're under numerous tribes. But see, the problem is we don't understand. There's more like Daniel. If Joe had a book in this moment in history, there's more like Joe. Because when Daniel says we, he's not entreating the Lord for himself, the issue for himself. He's entreating the Most High for all at that point. All that are Israel and Jacob. Judah, excuse me. And what is Daniel stating right here? You have scattered us to scattered tribes which we call nations. The men of Judah and Jerusalem, even all Israel that are near, that are far off. That kind of covers everybody. Through all countries, the Most High has driven them. Ladies and gentlemen, they're not all in one spot. Even the people that have the same mentality of Daniel, let us worship the Most High, they're not all in one spot. This is Daniel telling all the people that are far off. See, that's not when we're, what we understand when we're reading this. This is Daniel's message to us. We have been driven out of our land to other lands. It don't matter if we 10 feet from our land. It don't matter if we 3,000 miles from Zion National Park. What matters is, is we're not there. What matters is, is we trespass. Oh, my daddy did that. It's the same bloodline. It's the same attitude. We all make the same encoded chemical mistakes. Your decisions are chemical reactions, chemical reactions, chemical reactions. You're fluid. The human body is 80% water. You're fluid. Remember, he said, this is how we pray to be saved. And this, in the next sentence, this is the reason why. You're a man, you play around in men in the dark, this is why you've been moved to another area where men play in the dark to test your ass in this generation. You're a woman, you play around with women. This is you being moved to your own little personal Isle of Lesbos to test you to see if you can separate from your trespass. You're a killer, you kill. You're serving your time. When you're released, are you killing again? Or have you planned to kill the witnesses? You're not passing the test of your trespass. You are scattered based on your sin. Are you a thief? You've been put in a house of thieves. You've stolen. You remember the taste. You remember the taste of your ancestors stealing. Now. You got a choice to, are you going to continue to steal? You're an adulterer. 
Ethnically, you've always been an adulterer. You just don't know your ancestors. You committed adultery this time around. Are you going to continue this day forward? This doesn't mean, oh, dear wife, I need to directly tell you, because Daniel didn't. It's none of our concerns what Daniel did. That's the most high's concern. You like to stare at ass and titties all day long and you can't help it no matter what you're supposed to be thinking about? It's because your ancestors stared at asses and titties all day long no matter what they were supposed to be thinking about. Do you want to get over the hill of trespass that sitteth before you? Do you want to get over your Alexander Great Mound that sitteth before you? Or will you just continue to accept the trespass of bag of dicks? Will you continue to accept fertility smacks? Hmm? Will you become the eunuch because your drive is for pleasure and for nothing more? How long will you stay in static? Half light, half dark. How long will you stay without a clear image of direction in your life? For the pursuit of your destiny. Let us continue. Please. No issue to us belonging to confusion of faith to our kings, to our princes, and to our fathers, because we have sinned against thee. Stop, please. Think about this. How many of you live in cities with caucus leaders? How many of you are caucus that are watching? You have kings, princes, that are not in confusion. <clears throat> How many people have lived with color under the rule of senators that don't look like you, mayors that don't look like you, governors that don't look like you? If we live in a system of racism, if we have a KKK, if we have a Dr. Martin Luther King, if we have a Malcolm X, then race seems to matter. If we have a civil war, if we have civil rights, if we have a constitution, if we have statutes and laws, then your position in this seems to matter. The faces are in confusion here. This is why we go by what? We go by document. Show me your permission slip or show me you have claimed your rights. And I'll show you a policy versus police in the same uniform by the same man or woman. If I have documents, and you have a driver's license, we're going to be treated differently. Anything you want to add, Joe? No, not to really add. Continue, please. All right. Thank you. To the issue, our Eloha belongs mercies and forgiveness, though we have rebelled against her. So, again, how can salvation come from anything else? Is that not a code? To the Most High belongs mercy. This is the God of life. This keeps your heart beating. Let's continue. Thank you. We need to have we obeyed the voice of the Ishi'ar Eloha to walk in his laws. 
which he sent before us by his servants, the prophets. Okay, so you have been introduced to everything. Everybody in the world knows Judgment Day. Everybody in the world knows Judgment Day. They know the Most High is the judge. They know the Most High will judge them on what they did with their life. How they live their life. They ignore the bounds, the rules of judgment. They're given to us. These are the rules to live by, so these are the rules of judgment. It's very simple. It's our efforts put in, like Daniel's. Everybody has a conscience. The problem is, is we don't pay attention to the conscious or the consciousness or the subconscious because conscious it works on a subconscious level it is a voice in your head that tells you to do good there's a voice in your head that tells you to do bad or an instinct that tells you or instincts you to do bad now based on that voice that instinct that thought pattern it is how you act to that how you react to that it is already in you it is not an outside influence if it is an out outside influence on a spiritual level let's pretend it's commercial on a spiritual level they have that right we are but vessels if I do good things good things can enter if I do bad things bad things can enter if I do good things and I reach a height of goodness, I'm allowed to be tested. Whether I understand the rules or not, that means something is going to put bad thoughts in good guy's mind. That's man's decision. And it states right here, Neither have we obeyed good thoughts in our minds. Which is showing us it's good thoughts in bad guy mind. You're not reading about all this wonderful success of the Israelites. It's brief. It's categorized as history because it's a history book. You're being told. A form of riddles of history for you to be able to connect on the level of the prophets. You start reading this and they fill the gaps with pictures and instinct. If you know what I'm talking about. Put a one down in the box. I'm just joking. <laughs> because continue. <laughs> yeah. All Israel have transgressed thy law, even by the party, that they might not obey thy voice. Every American Indian that is an Israelite. Israelite. Have transgressed. Any one of us that climbs to a great height among the rest, and somebody writes about him, it will be just like the Book of Kings. He did the shit of his fathers. Because we, there's not one of us that's clean. There's not one of us that's righteous. There's not one of us that's holy. This is why I don't want to hear people say, you do this, and you do this, and you smoke, and you cuss. No, no, no. Nobody says, look, I'm trying to better myself. And I appreciate what you're doing. I don't appreciate the way you go about it. Nobody says that. Now, in their hearts, they might be trying to get that across. But 
nobody says those words. You yourself, whether you pick up that book, that fishing rod or not, you are your own fisherman. I've told you from the start, I'm fishing with a pole that I just broke off from a tree and I lightly sharpened and I'm stabbing it in the water. What comes up, comes up. And if the holy priest rises from it, then he rises. And if he doesn't, hopefully he rises from somebody else's fishing rod. I'm in a position to stop people from sinking lower. That's all I'm trying to do. Are you ready to continue, sir? Sorry for interrupting. Therefore, the curse is poured upon us. And the oath that is written in the book, in the, hold on. Therefore, the curse is poured upon us and the oath that is written in the law of Moses, the servant of the Most High, because we have sinned against him. Okay, so there is the oath for us in the writings of Moses. We have an oath between the Most High and us. It's called the Covenant. Anybody know where the oath is? Anybody know what the oath is called? Daniel has alluded to it already. We talk about it all the time. You want to, You know where Daniel quoted from it from? Hey, Joe, hold that spot and go up to... Uh, Verse 4. Can you read verse 4? <coughs> and I prayed unto the Ishi, my Eloha, and made my confession and said, O Ishi, the great and dreadful Eloha, keeping the covenant and mercy to them that love him, to them that keep his commandments. So, the word covenant means a compact made by passing between pieces of flesh. What does pieces of flesh mean there? It's two hands shaking. A compact. What happens when you put your hands together? You make a compact little pocket. What happens when you reach out and shake somebody else's hand? You make a compact little pocket. What do you do when you're doing that? You're confederate with them. You're in agreement. Hi, Jim, I appreciate you. Hi, Doug, I appreciate you too. You introduced yourself. We're here to do business. And you open with a handshake, a compact. How did they used to seal business deals in the past? I'm not touching you until we're in agreement. Now we're agreed, we compact, shake hands. Confederate. Now we come up to a point where we understand everybody's language. So when they make a treaty, what do they do with the treaty? They sign as evidence or fact of confederacy, league, togetherness, union. Isn't that funny? Why ain't the word union on here? It would show you, it would be too much to show you the Civil War. This is how you can really assume. All this is compiled in our time and still trying to hide the recent past, the recent racist past, excuse me. Now again, the past is racist. It is very racist. Just to talk about it is racist. You have black nations that have white Slaves, that's racist. When they taught you it was white races that had black slaves, you knew it was racist. So it ain't racist turning it the other way around. It's still racist. No matter how you cut it, the past is racist. This is why people try to keep you out of the past. Because, again, so many people's feelings are hurt and people forgot how to deal with their feelings. Because everybody, is under the curse of entitlement right now. 
everybody feels they're the only king. But remember, we live in a land where everybody is the king. And what happens when you got all these kings stacked on one time? Somebody wants an empire. And for one king to gain an empire, another king has to go. So, the covenant that is alluded to is mercy. Oh, dreadful God, mercy unto them that love him. Where do we hear that line? That's part of the Ten Commandments, right? That's actually the covenant. So when we're down here, the oath that Moses gave for us between us and the Most High. This is no mystery. Well, let's go back down where we were. And he has confirmed his words, which he speak against us and against our judges that judged us by bringing upon us a great evil for under the whole heaven have have been done as have been done unto Jerusalem. Now think about that. Jerusalem done been seized at the fell, it been seized it but but it's never been covered up and hidden. Daniel has, is at a point what? He's in Babylonian captivity. And when they leave Babylon, they go and rebuild. Right? So, it's not even at the point where it's hidden yet. So, it says, by bringing upon us a great evil, for under the whole heaven, that means since the dawn of time, Nothing like this has ever been done. See? So what is happening to us with it being hidden and saying it's here, it's there, it's here, it's there. Our situation is worse than Daniel's. See, they took Jerusalem off the foundation that they had to re the foundation. See, where we don't even know where the foundation, <laughs> right? We have, we have general hints that it is in Zion. But we live at a time of switcheroony, three-card money. And who can beat the dealer? That's the, always the game with three-card money. So if we can beat the dealer, we can find the marble under the cup. Now, you have to determine, I have to determine who the dealer is. Is the dealer the oppressor or is the dealer the most high? Because you're an Israelite. And it turns out every time you bow your head and pray for silly stuff, it comes true. How many times have you bowed your head and prayed for something important? All these angels over you, even when you're doing wicked, have to do your best interest until judgment passes on you for committing so much wickedness. Because Hollywood always show you a movie and they show you their wickedness is coming from the most high because when they show you their witchcraft on screen, they show you what? Greek writing? No. Latin writing? No. Hebrew writing? Yes. So who are they working for? Who could Babylon 
excuse me, the daughter of Babylon, Statue of Liberty. Who could the daughter of Babylon be working for? Unless they're working for the man of Oz himself. Because we're all plugged in. Unless they're working for the dreadful himself. Do they know they're working for the dreadful? Do they know their, their reward for working for the dreadful is still the lake of fire? With the trade-off, a good life, a great life. Let's continue. As it is, as it is written in the law of Moses, all, all this evil is come upon us. Yet may we not our prayers before the issue of our aloha, that we might turn from our iniquities and understand thy truth. Therefore, have the Ishi watched upon us <coughs> and brought it upon us. For the Ishi, our Eloha, is righteous in all his works which he doeth. For we obey not his voice. <coughs> Sorry, Joe, a little bit louder. I got the kids upstairs doing their uh, disco ball. Um, and the, the wheels on the floor are relatively loud. I don't know if the, ca if the, if the microphone's picking all this up. It's just a. Uh, it's a little bit louder if you can. I got background right. noise. <laughs> Sorry. Um, I'm just picking up from Twitter. And he, and he have confirmed his words, which he spake against us and against our judges that judge us by bringing upon us a great evil. For, for under the whole heaven have not done, have been done as been, have done unto Jerusalem. It is written, as it is written in the law of Moses, both this evil is come upon us. Yet may we not our prayers before the Ishi our Eloha, that we might turn our turn from our iniquities and understand thy truth. Therefore, have the Ishi watched upon the evil and brought it upon us. For the issue, our Eloha is righteous in all his works which he doeth, for we obey not his voice. And now, O Ishi, our Eloha, that has brought thy people forth out of the land of Egypt with a mighty hand, and has gotten thee renowned, as this day, as at this day, we have sinned, we have done wicked, O Ishi. According to all thy righteousness, I beseech thee, let thine anger and thy fury be turned away from the city, Jerusalem, the holy mountain, thy holy mountain, because of me, because for our, our sins, and for the iniquities of our fathers. Jerusalem and thy people are become a reproach to our fathers. Excuse me. So, uh, I think it's important here that we understand that I beseech thee, we must come unto him. There is no God is going to save me. He's already said, I turn my face from you so we must enact our laws because we're not unplugged so our confession goes unto him still our record goes unto him we don't understand how the mind works the same way most of us don't understand how computers uh, send signals back and forth just like your body sends signals back and forth we don't understand how the most high set this up even with him telling the prophets to tell us we are rejected on levels he still has it clearly if they're being punished there's still an open line of communication to get back home it can't it can't come any plainer it, it can't. It won't mean anything to you 
talking in the same monotone voice until the, it ends and you wake up. I'm not your father. When I start yelling, it's not because your hand's in the cookie jar. Stop crying and complaining about such such trivial things. You cannot sit there and say, I want to go for a bike ride and then cry when the wind keeps you in one place. Lament all you want, but if you don't pedal through the wind, take it from the guy that crossed states on a mountain bike. Suck up the tears and keep moving. We have a choice. We can stay here bitter with a lie or we can move forward content with the truth. How much of this racism really even matters when you find out I'm not even a slave, I'm, I'm descended of Britain? I'm not the African? How much of this slavery shit really matters when you find out I'm the American Indian? We are of generations that have already commingled with the American Indian. When they're removed from Egypt, if you say Egypt is Illinois, if you say Egypt is Indianapolis, they're removed during the French Indian War. They're removed after the Civil War, when the participants of the Civil War have to join the Union and push the Indians past the Mississippi. They're removed when they're, when they're, when they're tribal leaders sign contracts. They're removed when they did not stay part of those tribes and let the men do whatever they wanted with the land and take the checks. They were removed and constructed as urban Indians. They weren't moved from continent to continent. Generally, they were removed by confusion of faces. Drive to an area today. And it's Swedish this. And it's Scottish this. Go into the area in America. That's Swedish dairy farms, right? Down in South Ohio, Central Ohio. Go into the area. And most of those people don't look like they're your typical Swedish people portrayed today. Not all of them have blonde hair. Why are there dark haired people here? It's a confusion of faces. And that's amongst the caucus itself. Vincent brings this up. Go and read your 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 rapper. Go read their biography. See if it says they're an African American, or see if it says they're an American. Different status. An American's a national. You saw the post that showed, oh, Ice Cube argues what? We're POWs. Stop saying we're slaves. On you, Joe. All right. Now, therefore, O oh, our Eloha, hear the prayer of thy servant and his supplication, and cause thy face to shine upon thy sanctuary that is destined for the issue seek. O oh, my Eloha, incline thine ear and hear. Open thine ears and behold our desolations in the city which is called by thy name. Oh, hold on. See? Do you understand? He is quoting Ezekiel, what is it, 23? Or it's, where, 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 where is it? Everywhere you went, you blaspheme my name. I do this not for you, Israel. I do this for my holy name. Is, is that what he's quoting right now? 
Is is he being slick to us? Do you see what Daniel's doing? He's talking to the most high on a, on a level most high respects. He done read these books. We done highlighted these things. Yeah, the most high cares about us, but not as much as he cares about his name. I showed you where he said, when you're down with me, you're going to change your name to elect, and you're going to change your name to servant, and you will form a tribe. Yes, you run. People will not read. They will just change their name to yes, you run, doing what they want to do. Everywhere you went, you blaspheme my name. There's only there's only so many names for for Most High that's been given to man. We're English, the last language created. Hebrew, it's the symbols, right? The symbols have names, huh? Tav Yud Tav. Wait 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 wait. Wait, how? What's the symbol called, man? <laughs> let me let me look this up real quick. Hebrew. Hebrew alphabet. All right. And all we got to do is click on one. And we just looking for the words. And then we just going to string together the words. Okay. Now. Here's one of the symbols which make a sound that's a word. Now, here's a, the other symbol that makes a sound that's a word. Now, it either makes a letter or the sound, because the sound forms the letter. Pronounce the word A and realize you're going to spell a lot of letters to get A. Tell us. To spell the word B, it's B-E-E. -E. To spell the word C, it's S-E-E. -E. To spell the word D, it's D-E-E. -E. I hope you understand where I'm going with this. When you pronounce the symbol for H, it's hey. This is why in English, the last language used, we say hey ya. Uh. The symbol next would be yod. That's where we get the Y from. That is why the Y is used so much. So if you would spell Yisrael, it would start with a yod, right? <coughs> so it would be hey, yod, hey. Or Depending on the calculation of the vowel used, or it'd be yade, a e i o or u, or he, a e i o or u. Based upon what we understand from I am that I am's translation from H. One, nine, one, I will, I am. Am is the only thing that translates. Am being hey, he, one or other. What in English do we use for man? talking about someone else him he i hope you understand hey yud hey hey yud hey is what they would anciently have pronounced you want to talk like they did in the past pronounce the symbols 
Hey, yud, hey, ain't no hoa. Every day I fall asleep, he gives me a way to defend his name. Everywhere we went, we blasphemed his name. It's easy to talk like the Most High. He doesn't say, hello. Hi. Hiya. Most Hiya doing. Everybody's starting to talk like Moab. Grand Rising. What chapter did you get that from? Which ethnos did you get that from? Which land did you get that from? You heard it from another brother because that's how they trick you as I've always told you. If you go to a store and they drop something, it's damaged. If you go to lunch and they drop your lunch, it's damaged. How do you think someone dropping information isn't gonna damage it? Fry you, Baal! Fry! I hate these radio puppets that pop up and play in your mind. Praising dragons. Mm. Dragon boys. That's what they are. Soy dragon boys. Soy warriors. They're out to unique themselves, to make themselves unique amongst the others. As they soil your mind. Grand Egyptian rising to you, Egyptian brother and sister. The Egyptians will be carted out of here naked. That's what Isaiah says. Naked. Thank you, great creator. Hey, yod, hey. We shall not forget that you took us out of the land of Egypt and brought us into our own through the wilderness where we learn the law. These are the things we need to remember and reinforce, and these are why these stories are read to us. And we should be teaching our children these stories so they understand these stories to teach the next generation because another monster will rise and teach a different language so no one remembers. Because why? We fall away. And this is our punishment. Mind wipe. How many times have we been punished? I'm sure it's connected to the statue of Nebuchadnezzar. Each time we're punished, they add something new. Listen to Daniel. Oh, nothing under the world has ever been done. You didn't knock the foundation down. We got to re the foundation. What has happened to us? Where is Waldo? Yeah, we'll sell him. Hmm? Every puppet with its own portion of the peace. To rebuild, a billion pieces have to be reunited. So he says, just start fresh. Let's continue.
but we do not present our supplication for the uh, righteousness, for, but for thy great mercies. O issue hear, O issue forgive, O issue pardon, and do uh, defer not for thine own sake, O my Eloha, for thy city and thy people are called by thy name. So, and while, excuse me. So you can see that it's not about us. We're sacrificing because we're Israelites. Oh, other nations get ready to pick. It's about the mercy that comes upon us for the trespass of us and our forefathers, the iniquities that we have taken upon ourselves, and again, for our forefathers that have come before us, because this is what's put us in the position locked in these nations. And as these things happen, this is how the information is retrieved and given to us in a different time period to be able to use what are we using we're using old laws to get around modern bullcrap statutes am i right or wrong all right let's continue all right and while i was speaking and praying and confessing my sin and the sin of my people israel and presenting my supplication before the issue, my aloha, for the holy mountain of my my aloha. Yea, while I was speaking in prayer, even the man Gabriel, whom I had seen in the vision at the beginning, being caused to fly swiftly, touching me about the time of the evening oblation. So, again. He's done everything he's supposed to. He's gone beyond, above. You know, this isn't this, I have this private place to pray. This isn't about how he puts his hands. This isn't about, you know, he's got his best goods on. This isn't about he's clean. He just took a shower. This is about him confessing his sins, him putting on the same potatoes come in as a garment rolling around in ash which is usually white gray covering himself in ash then they get again using confession repenting entreating on others that are not even close to him. Anywhere they may be. Taking on his own the cause of everyone else within captivity. Wherever their captivity may be. And his heart was right between him and the Most High. His mind was right it doesn't matter how everybody else looked at him. So the Most High sent him a, a visitor. And it turns out that this writing says it's Gabriel. And again, Gabriel. Gabriel. Ale, like the drink. Yisrael ale. So. Alright, let's continue. Nothing in the translation that's going to stand out. Alright. And, and talk with me. And said, O oh, Dan, I am now come forth to give thee skill and understanding. And at the beginning of thy supplications, the commandments come forth, and I am come to show thee, for thou art greatly beloved. Therefore, understand the matter 
and consider it division. All right, so while he's doing this, while I was speaking in prayer, Gabriel comes in, whom I seen in the vision. Okay? So then, he tells him why he's here. Got to make sure you completely understand what you saw. And what does he say? While I started my supplication, the commandments came forth. And I come to show thee, you are loved. So, that's pretty interesting. Okay? How does the angel know? Right? Well, check it out, Daniel. At the beginning of your supplication, the commandment came forth, and I am come to show. So, get this. While he's chilling in heaven, right? They're doing their thing, and then, woo, woo, whatever, bat signal, sirens, whatever, heaven signal, right? Memo, memo. Right. Urgent message for Gabriel. Okay, what's this? And then he says, a commandment came forth. Right? And the commandment that came forth was he was told to come and show you, Daniel. And let me let you know, on the side, Daniel, you're greatly loved. Well, how could Daniel be greatly loved? Unless they all just sit down watching us all day and all night. Can you imagine there is a heaven it's just a piece of glass and above heaven there is a place of dwelling in that place of dwelling there lives these beings that are an army for this unique being that created us all. And they can fly, they can teleport, they can do this, they can do that. And most of their knowledge, efforts, revolve around us living and dwelling near each other. And the outcome of our business transactions and our efforts of war, life, pursuits of happiness. This is what they do. If you knew from your birth Let's say you're 30 years old. I'm 46. If you knew from your birth, when you were able to understand things, if you knew everything in heaven revolves around you and the next guy and the next guy and the next guy and the next guy, This is the Most High's project. He wants to see everything come out completely perfect. Would you ever think about suicide? If you knew everybody upstairs was watching. This is the power of ignorance, not knowing. You know, I watched a series on people 
that committed suicide. One was people that all went to the same bridge, Golden Gate Bridge. Uh, one was, you know, another bridge. One was, uh, what, uh, 100, pe 100 YouTubers. You know, there was a YouTuber that had a very expensive car and they took that car on the expressway the wrong way and plowed into a family and obliterated everybody in that accident. You know, from reading this, I believe everybody upstairs was watching. It's not that there's nothing better to do. It is that this is the thing to do. The world is a stage. You, how many times have you heard this in your life? Just as much as you heard Judgment Day. They're all watching. They're all decide. We love you, Daniel. You, we, we bet on you. We bet for you. The stock market exists as above, so below. Do they vote? Thumbs up, thumbs down. We decree he's gone too far. The council has spoken. Love and respect. Mercy unto us, most high, we believe. This one has gone too far. Here are our efforts to compose a fair hearing. Right? They give Bork a brief. And then he gives a, a command, yea or nay. I'm just proposing. It doesn't have to happen this way. It's just, you know, those intricacies of things you seem to be inspired subconsciously. The little movies that your mind presents to you. Ready, continue. Sorry about that interruption. This one's titled 70 Weeks. We see a bunch of Christian nonsense about 70 weeks. Let us actually see what the word truly says. All right. 70 weeks are determined upon thy people and upon thy holy city to finish the transgression and to make an end of sins and to make the reconciliation for iniquity. And to bring in everlasting righteousness and to seek a division and prophecy. Hold on, and to hold on. The most holy. Okay, sorry about that. There was a breakup to seal up the vision of the prophecy. So understand the 70 weeks is unto Daniel from the time that his, shall we say, is in treatment to the Most High for the people. So he is rewarded with a vision that now makes him a prophet. He is now given his piece of the prophecy. Seventy weeks your people got to get their shit together for this to end and for the curse to be removed. Okay. So this is from the time of Daniel. Okay, you ready? Yep. Okay, so wait. Can you read one more time? Uh, this sentence, because this is what they had to do in their time for us. Seventy weeks are determined upon thy people and upon thy holy city to finish the transgression and to make an end of sins and to make reconciliation for iniquity and to bring in everlasting righteousness. 
Okay. Um, Keep going. Sorry. And to seal up the vision and prophecy and to anoint the most holy. Okay. So, understand what's going on. Dear Daniel, standing right in front of him, want you to understand. 70 weeks until the punishment's lifted. You have to do this, do this, do this, do this. Now, to seal up the vision and prophecy, to seal up the, 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 the writing. Anybody figure that out yet? It's a printing press. 70 weeks is what? Three and a half years, something like that? Huh? Here, do a copy. Let's do that. Let's open another one. Open one that's already open. Yeah, let's just open another one. No we'll pay 70 weeks. Okay, yeah, 17 weeks. Okay. And yeah, I gotta just take it out of words. 70 weeks in, let's say, years. What is 70 weeks in years? Just like you said, it is a uh, do 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 calendar. It is one year and 34 days. Okay? I hope everybody understands what's going on. Daniel, from the moment I'm telling you a year and 30, right? How many weeks are in a year? 52, right? So what? 34, is that three months or something? What? So 52 minus 70, might as well say 20, 20 weeks. What is 20 weeks? Right, 0.38. So, 20 weeks, 7, right? 20 times 7, right? No. Yeah. Let's say days. Oh, you won't just. 20 in days. Right? 140 days, right? So 70 weeks in the days is 490 days. You already know there's 365 days in our modern year. In the past, they were going by 360 because they didn't count solstice and equinox days in Hebrew. So, we have to understand, he's telling you to print within a year, <laughs> just over a year and three months. You got a year, 70 weeks, bub. You got 70 weeks to get this cleaned up and anoint who? Who gets anointed when they leave Babylon? Anybody remember? Nehemiah builds the temple. Ezra is the high priest. Ezra goes out into the wilderness and it's fast for 40 weeks. Then Ezra takes the cup. And what's Ezra do? What's Ezra do, Joe? Ezra, uh, what will we find in Second Ezra and stuff? Oh, yeah, yeah. Second Ezra, you hear about the, the, um, the Messiah and the Most High bringing everything that was brought to an end back to a life. God of life. Bing! 
Yeah. Right, continue. <laughs> yeah, I'm ready. Um, know therefore and understand that for the going forth of the commandments to restore and to build Jerusalem unto the Messiah and Prince, Messiah the Prince, shall be seven weeks <coughs> and three score and two weeks. Okay. Wow. Think about what was just said there. From the time of the going forth of the commandment to restore. That's the book of Nehemiah, right? When he gets the commandment to restore. That's him arguing legally about the argument between Cyrus and Darius. So, from that point forward to the time of the, what, Messiah Prince? We're not understanding this right. Go ahead. Um, the street shall be built again, and the wall in tr uh, troublous times. Okay, so think about this. This is what is always being said. Seven weeks and three score and two weeks. That's always the argument, right? So, people understand it had nothing to do with us. Nothing to do with us. See, this is what they always argue about the daughter of Babylon. But the daughter of Babylon has everything to do with us. But see right here, this has nothing. The time to restore and to build Jerusalem. If I didn't read nothing else, I would think that, oh, it's got to be right now. No, no, no. This has to do with the time of Nehemiah and them and their legal argument. And when all the taxation, Pharaoh, demonism, well, that taxation money was stolen from the people, Nehemiah led the revolt against the owners, the merchants that overtaxed the people. And he said, give them their stuff back. And that's what they're afraid of today, a Nehemiah. That's why they don't talk about Nehemiah at all. They're afraid of a Nehemiah raising up and taking the people with pitchforks and torches to the businesses to say, oh, we were supposed to be paying in pesos and you charged us in a fictitious dollar rate that doesn't exist. Since the dollar symbol is just another symbol for the pesos. See, Special quality buyers. <laughs> so, seven weeks. The, the Messiah, the Prince, shall be seven weeks and three score and see. Now look, it says to build, to restore Jerusalem, to give it unto the Messiah, oh, I hit the wrong button, to give it unto the Messiah, a Messiah is a leader, right, as a king or a priest. They had a year and three months to anoint, seal up the word, process a book, anoint the most holy of the people, and that's the Messiah that takes them. Didn't the book of Nehemiah say they took the child outside and anointed him at the end? At the time when they went to go find the child to anoint him, that's when Ezra started getting in an argument with all the other child that were half-breed with Moab, half-breed with Ammon, and he started ripping the hair out and cussing at him. 
Yo, we read this book. I read this book. I know exactly what they're talking about here. You got nothing to do. You can take the time and read the book of Ezra and Nehemiah. They are separate books, and they tell you they anoint the child. And in fact, let's click on. Let's see if which we reason Messiah right here. Let's see. Here's the prince. They're telling you the prince is talked about here. That's not true. It says, and the people no more. The book of Daniel, book of Hosea, the prince. And the prince's Messiah, the future people, the, no, no, the Romans who were under attack, uh, Titus, under the expiration of 70 weeks to destroy the temple and disperse the Jews. All right, so, okay, so that's all over the place. Okay, so look, this is three score and two weeks shall Messiah, the one that they anointed as holy, he will be cut off but not for himself and the people of the prince shall come and destroy the city now if I was a drunk let's pretend I'm drunk I'm a drunk and that sure sounds like the book of Lamentations in the, in the book of Amos yeah, it's funny because I sat there and said, let's do these minor prophets and then let's tackle one of the big prophets. And they sound like they talking about exactly what happened in the book of the minor prophets. Which means when they talk about them destroying the temple and over here they talk about it's the Romans. And when they talk about in lamentation, they talk about a people that use fishing spears and fishing hooks now when we look at this Rome and as it became a conglomerate and that's funny because we didn't talked about half this for half of the beginning of this right as they conglomerize they take on all these different portions of other ethnoses and tribes falling under one nation so they're talking about when the temple, and they're being truthful over here, when they'll be, it'll be destroyed by Titus. And this is people's argument. Uh, this is other people's argument that Jerusalem was recently destroyed. And again, I'd have to agree with that because if I have a book that sits there and says to the Archbishop of Canterbury, even you and your dominion is, is registered at Jerusalem, well, then that would be to say then Jerusalem exists. So much so that they have the knowledge of other nations and the nation doesn't even know that they are recorded in the records of Jerusalem when it stands. That'd be like you going three states over to a stranger's house and saying, oh, I know where you live and say your address. And you'd be like, what? How do you know I live there? Well, we record all kinds of stuff. That is the same to say, if this book that I have is written in the 1800s, when this man makes this trip, then that means Jerusalem was still standing in the 1800s. That goes to say, if they are talking about the actions that took place at Rome, which is the same time to say, as the book of Lamentations is to say, it happened right before this book is written, is to say, this happened right before our time. Not a thousand years ago, definitely not two thousand years ago. And this is the problem with all of this. Because you must show me where it's going to say Jerusalem is going to lay dormant for a thousand years. Then I'll understand. Show me in this book. I'll get it. But if we go to the last prophets, it gives us another timeline until it is fulfilled I'm going by that timeline so if we understand not one prince 
is being brought up here. Two princes are being brought up here. Now here's the problem. We're in Daniel 7, excuse me, 9. We just read Daniel 11 before. Daniel 11 is arguing or giving us the record of this is the time of the kings after Alexander the Great. Here is wicked Antiochus Epiphanes. He's given us a prophecy of the people that come from the prince. Now, can you read this one more time, Daniel 26? Nine. And after three score and two weeks shall Messiah be cut off and not for himself. And the people of the prince shall come, shall destroy the city and the sanctuary, and the end thereof shall be with a flood, and unto the end of the war desolation are determined. Okay, so here's what I'm saying very clearly. The Messiah that was anointed is cut off. But not because he made that decision. Now take this sentence, this next sentence, and and it's got the word and. Now what I want you to do is I want you to build two different sentences. One word's on the side of and, and the other word's on the side of, uh, another word's on the other side. So take the two words and build two different sentences. And this is what it would sound like. And the people of the prince, that's going to be Antiochus, right? And the people of the prince shall come and destroy the city. And the people of the prince shall come and destroy the sanctuary. Now, the prince himself is going to be Antiochus. Antiochus comes and he destroys the people in one shot. He says, I'm going to make everybody in the region do these pagan practices or die. That destroys the city. Antiochus is part of the Seleucid Empire, which later joins, because it's already Greek. Greeks joined to Rome, then it's basically the power of Rome. When Vespasian comes in, and his son Titus destroys everything within two years. Vespasian milks this puppy for 13 years. He dies. Titus is doesn't have the same patience. He destroys it within two years. That is the second sentence. And the people of the prince. Which means the Romans had authority as a council. They never had authority of... We are the prince of this or the king of that. No princes or kings are respected in the council because then they would have more authority than a individual member of the council also being the council member later to argue, well, I'm king, I should lead the council. And then you're right back under a king, which defeats the purpose of the council at the time. Remus and Romulus, Rome had kings. They drew away from that. Caesar, Rome had kings. Caesar led Rome back into kings for a brief amount of time. Rome said, no more. Individual power over an empire becomes too wicked. <clears throat> this is right there for us. And we are dealing with what? The conveyance of the new world is the transfer of power of Rome into the church, the harlot, which leads to other prophecies, which covers the time that we're in and tells us from the time of Daniel up until the time of now. 
Now we can do this two ways. We can read the Old Testament until we find these churches and this new paganism that shall rise. We can always go to the Old, I mean, to the New Testament and we can use the precepts highlighting the Old Testament and then we have it leading back to the book of Joel anyway in the Old Testament. Because the New Testament is just the books of Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. The real people in the power of that book is John and Stephen. The book itself tells you the real prophet in the book of Acts, recording the acts that happened, the real prophet is Stephen. He was the one that could cast demons out of people and perform miracles. The real person that sees the visions is John, and John under the right, looking under for the right stuff. John is actually the brother of James, which would make John the brother of Jude, which would make John really this mysterious Jesus. Hence, there is no book of Jesus, but there's a book of John. Yet all the other mysterious people, Isaiah has a book. Jeremiah has a book. Jeremiah is told to eat dung. But this J. Jesus don't have no book. Oh, no, no, no. The whole compilation is everything. No, no, no. So, presumably, Paul's writing about either a combination of, uh, we already know it's a combination, it's a combined story made by Arius Pisos. Leave that aside. Paul's writing letters on the behalf of somebody arguing about their spirituality. It's most likely John, even when Jesus walks out, right? Who's baptizing in the water? Who's the priest in the water? It's John. So again, John, and who's the other guy? Stephen or Stephen. Those seem to be the people that actually have the spiritual power at the time. They were already corrupt because each time they went into captivity, they walked out with some of their enemies' beliefs. We already saw when they broke forth in the portion that went to Ethiopia, wrote in the Ethiopian books, what? Resurrection. What the fuck is John teaching? What is John teaching? It's resurrection! The whole New Testament is from the captivity that brought forth this teaching. Where they learn it? Egypt. What the fuck is the Pharaoh getting wrapped up for? Why is he getting wrapped like a mummy? It's in a time of swords. You imagine your loved one died and their arm is slashed off, their face is ripped up. There's a wound in his stomach that made his guts pour out. Wrap him up. He might resurrect. Why? Because they knew the Most High gives life. And what's the problem? The problem is his understanding comprehension it's the individual in the moment call on your god call one what you believe in in the moment you need it shazam oh nothing happened oh you're getting ran through zeus nothing happened oh you're getting your head chopped off i believe in the most high god Wow, he struck him with the sword, but it did nothing. It's a miracle. 
We read about this all the time. Everybody knows when some shit happens, something goes wrong, everybody, oh my God! Everybody knows some bad shit happened. Jesus Christ. The mother in the car crash. The baby's trapped in the car. A woman instantly rips the door off like she's faster than the jaws of life. Well, how does that happen? What went through her mind? Oh my God, my baby. And right there, what happened? Not only is she plugged in, she got the surge of power to perform. Let's continue. Right. <clears throat> and he shall confirm the covenant with many for one week. Okay. And so. This is what happened. At the end shall be with a flood. Now, where does the daughter of Babylon stand? In water. Now, all these places have been altered through dams. Now, when dams break, guess what it does to valleys? And everybody's living in valleys. Guess what it does to valleys? What does it do, Joe? Uh, trying to remember Jamestown. <laughs> <laughs> Turn them into Jam. Turns them into a flood. How many people drown from floods? Uh, they said it was. 777 people with When a flood comes in, it's in the middle of the night. The, the, the flood of Jamestown, when it damn broke, happened in Pennsylvania. Jamestown, Pennsylvania. They said they found bodies, I believe, in Cincinnati, Ohio. Southeast of Pittsburgh washed all the way through the Ohio Valley to the other side of the valley, which is Cincinnati. <clears throat> and where's Cincinnati? Right on the Kentucky, the Ohio River, right at Kentucky, right? So it just pours back into the river. So they, they no longer consider it a, a flood anymore because it's back with the, the, the correct flow of the river. <laughs> So I show you those videos with Ohio Flood Valley, and it shows you all of the center of Ohio down to the river is considered Flood Valley. Flood happens at night, the whole town sleep. The people farthest away got a chance of surviving. The weakest houses are pushed over. Anybody with regular glass windows, that shit folds. Water rushes into your bedroom. Wait. Instantly wake up, your beds move sideways. Three minutes, your whole room submerged. This is why you have two story houses today. This is why you don't need basements in the South because a lot of it's desert. And a lot of the South the valleys have been removed. Even before this generation started. I mean, they came here and they checked. That's why they called them diggers as well, right? Scavengers, because they would go into the mounds to see what they could find. Let's continue. All right. And in the midst of the week, he shall cause the sacrifice and the oblation to cease. And for the 
overstand uh overspreading of and for the overspreading of abominations he shall make it desolate even until the com com consummation and that determined shall be poured upon the desolate. Okay, here we have consummation is the completion. <clears throat> so basically they're saying He's going to ravage them very quick after the construction of the temple. I mean, it's very clear. And he shall confirm thy covenant, the covenant, with many for one week. Okay? Now, people will tell you, a week's a thousand years, all this good stuff. It's lovely. The, he's telling Daniel directly, you're going to rebuild the temple, and it's only going to stand for so long. He told you 70, 70 weeks. He was literally, make this print and seal it. Why? Because once the word goes out, Jerusalem stands again. What does happen in the book of Maccabees? Maccabees, they rebuild the temple, right? The temple's rebuilt. The temple's going on. And here comes Antioch. Well, if this is at a time. When one of these cats is on is is in Babylon, right? One of these cats is ruling Babylon, right? We t we see what time it is, and when they see when when we look and we say, okay, they say, excuse me, I'm trying to minimize this. I don't want to minimize. They say this is at the time of Ahasuerus, right? And they tell you the time Ahasuerus lives. Let's, come on, get you attacked. Right? And they tell you that this leads to the whole Darius thing, right? They tell us in the beginning exactly what time it is. In the first year, Darius, the son of the infamous Ahasuerus, who worked with side by side Nebuchadnezzar. Daniel is in Babylonian custody right now. He is a Babylon citizen. He is under their authority. The book of Nehemiah picks up right before the 70 weeks start. 70 weeks y'all have to make this book and anoint the child. He tells them, you will rebuild. But once you start getting this going, it's going to be for only a week. And he'll cause the sacrifice and oblation to cease and the overspreading of abominations. Is that not Antiochus Epiphanes? So, now we have exactly what Daniel is trying to tell us. They rebuilt the temple, where they shall rebuild the temple, and it shall stand briefly. And this is why the book of Nehemiah seems like it's a roller coaster real fast. And as soon as they were freed from Babylon, they went into captivity into Rome. A week, a week went by with the temple in operation. And then the Antiochus Epiphany situation happened to the family of Maccabees. If you see it differently, let us know in the comments. I want to thank you all for joining us. Anything you want to add, Joe? I don't know that. Ladies and gentlemen, if we don't read these things for ourselves, we'll hear other people's versions of them. Other people's versions of them don't seem to hold the truth for us. Thank you for joining us. Shalom. Shalom, everybody.